Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another record to play for you. Today's record is Knock Knee, so let's get started. Knock Knee. There once lived in a small town in China a man named Knock Knee. He was a strong, hard-working man who not only worked hard at his trade, but did all his own housework as well. He had no wife to do it for him, you see. His neighbors thought him a fine man who worked so hard he never took a vacation or left his house to amuse himself at the carnival or other entertainments. But Knock Knee was by no means the virtuous person his neighbors thought him. True, he labored hard enough by day, but at night, when everyone else was asleep, he used to sneak out and join a dangerous band of robbers who broke into rich people's houses and carried away anything they could find. This state of affairs went on for some time, for though a robber was caught now and then and punished, no suspicion ever fell on Knock Knee. He was such a respectable, industrious man. Knock Knee had already gotten a good deal of money as his share of the robberies, when it happened one morning as he was going to market that a neighbor asked him what was the matter with his face. Knock Knee raised his hand to his right cheek and discovered that it was twice the size of his left. Within moments, it began to feel very uncomfortable. But Nockney was not terribly concerned. I will wrap my face in warm towels, and surely the heat will cure the swelling. But no such thing happened, and the next day it was worse. Nockney stayed in bed, hoping to get better. But day by day, his cheek grew bigger and bigger until it was nearly the size of his head and ever so painful. Knock Knee was very upset. Not only was his cheek so funny looking and painful, but he could hear his neighbors making fun of him behind his back, which hurt his feelings very much indeed. One day, quite fortunately, a traveling doctor came into town. He sold not only all types of medicine, but also used many strange charms against witches and evil spirits. Nakni decided to consult him and asked him into his house. The doctor examined him carefully, then shook his head and sighed. Oh, Nakni, this is no ordinary swell cheek. I strongly suspect you have performed some bad deed which has cast down the anger of the spirits on you. None of my medicines will cure you, but if you are willing to pay me a lot of money, I can tell you how you may be cured. Then Knock Knee and the doctor began to bargain together, and it was many hours before they could come to terms. However, the doctor came out the better in the end, for he was determined not to part with his secret for less than a certain price. And Knock Knee really didn't want to carry his huge cheek to the end of his days, so he was obliged to part with most of his stolen money. When the doctor had pocketed what Nakni gave him, he told the suffering man to go on the first night of the full moon to a certain forest and there watch by a particular tree. After a time, he would see the dwarves and little sprites who live underground come out to dance and make merry. When they saw him, they would be sure to make him dance with them. The doctor insisted that this dancing was a very important part of the cure. And mind you, knock me, dance your very best. If you dance well and please them, they will grant you a wish, and you can then ask to be cured. If you dance badly, they will most likely play some trick on you out of spite, and you have enough problems already, so be sure to dance the right way. With that, the doctor said goodbye and departed. The first night of the full moon was near, and at the proper time, Knock Knee walked to the forest. With little difficulty, he found the tree the doctor had described, and feeling very nervous, he climbed into it and listened to the forest sounds. Knock Knee 
After a time, he saw the little dwarves gathering in the moonlight. They came from all directions, till at length there appeared to be hundreds of them. They were full of glee and danced and skipped and capered about, while Nockney grew so excited watching them that he crept further and further along his branch, till at length it gave a loud crack. All the dwarves stood still, and Nockney felt his heart beat fast. One of the dwarves looked up. Hey! Someone is up in that tree! Come down at once! Whoever you are, we must come and fetch you! In great fear, Nockney started to climb down. He was so nervous that he tripped near the ground and came bouncing and rolling down in a very undignified manner. When he had picked himself up, he walked forward and gave a low bow. And the dwarf who had first spoken and who appeared to be the leader looked at him angrily. Now then, who are you? And what brings you here to spy on our merrymaking? So Nockney told them his sad story from beginning to end and said how he had been advised to come to the forest and ask the dwarves to cure him. We'll see about that. First, however, you must dance for us. Should your dancing please us, maybe we'll be able to do something. But should you dance badly, we shall punish you. So now take warning and dance away. With that, he and all the other dwarves sat down in a ring around Nockney. Standing alone in the middle of this ring, Nockney felt quite frightened. Besides, he was still shook up by his fall from the tree and did not feel at all inclined to dance. But the dwarves were growing impatient. Begin, Nock, begin, come on. Come on, dance now. Move your feet. Move them. So Nockney began to dance. First he hopped on one foot and then on the other. But he was so stiff and upset he did very badly. And after a few minutes sank down on the ground and said he could dance no more. Well, the dwarves didn't like this at no, all. No, They crowded around him and let him have their anger. You, how could you do that? Come and interrupt us. A merry making. Here he has nothing in his hand. An elephant dances better than you. Cure you indeed. Huh. You brought one swollen cheek with you, but you shall soon have two. Ah! Ah! With that they ran off and disappeared, leaving Nockney to wander home as best he could. He stumbled away, weary and sad, not a little upset on account of the dwarf's threat. In the morning, he discovered that his fears had come true, for his left cheek was as swelled up as his right and he could scarcely see out of his eyes. The neighbors made fun of him more than ever, and the doctor, too, had disappeared, so there was nothing for him to do but to try the dwarves once again. He waited a month until the first night of the full moon came around once more, and then he trudged back to the forest and sat under the tree from which he had fallen. He had not long to wait. Before long, the dwarves came trooping out until they were all gathered in a large circle. But the leader kept on peering about him, looking for something. I, I don't feel comfortable. No, I don't indeed. I feel as if there's, there's some horrid mortal near us. Very near indeed. When Nockney heard this, he came forward and bowed low before the dwarves, who came crowding round and laughed and laughed at his comical appearance, with <laughs> his cheeks as round <laughs> as balloons. Look at those cheeks. <laughs> so hard to be allowed one more chance at dancing that the dwarves consented, and there's nothing they enjoy so much as being amused. Now, not me knew how much depended on his dancing well, so he really concentrated and began first quite slowly and then faster. He danced so nice and gracefully and made such interesting and wonderful steps that the dwarves were quite oh, delighted with me. him. Oh, it's yeah. The leader of the dwarves approached him with a smile. Oh, we are well pleased. We are hard we Oh, yes. Oh, terrific. That was an in payment for your dancing. Your face shall be cured. Farewell. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. And all the dwarves vanished. Knock knee, 
putting his hands on his face, found to his great pleasure that his cheeks were their natural size. The path home seemed short and easy for him now. He went to bed happy and decided never to go out robbing again. The following day, the whole town was full of news of Nockney's sudden cure. His neighbors questioned him, but could get nothing from him except that he had discovered an incredible cure for all kinds of ills. A few weeks later, a rich neighbor who had been sick for some years offered Nockney a large sum of money if he would tell him how he could be cured. Nockney consented on condition that he promised to keep the secret. He did so, and Nockney told him about the dwarves, their dances, and their cures. The neighbor did as Nockney instructed him and was easily cured by the dwarves. Then another and another came to Nockney to discover his secret, and from each he got a promise of secrecy and a large sum of money. This went on for many years, and after a time, Nockney became a wealthy man and ended his days in peace and prosperity. So that would knock me. So please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. And we'll have another video coming out real soon.